If you're doing testing right, you should have lots of ideas that are prioritized into your testing roadmap. Today, we're going to talk about the four ways I like to prioritize test ideas. By prioritizing your tests the right way, you'll be able to launch better tests and get better results faster. One of the most important parts of any testing program is to make sure that your A-B test ideas are flowing in from throughout the organization. If that is happening successfully, you'll have lots of ideas. And then you reach the challenge of prioritizing your ideas and knowing which test ideas to actually run. So here are the top four ways you should prioritize, and there may be other ways you should add on to that based on your specific company, your business needs, but these are four ways that most companies should consider as they're looking at each test idea. The first thing that you should consider when you're prioritizing your test ideas is the potential impact of the test. To figure out the potential impact, you have to look at a few different factors. The first factor that you should look at is your previous test results. Anytime you have causal data that indicates that a certain element or a page is valuable because you've tested it, that's a great way to know that that follow-up test idea might be valuable as well. You should look at previous impacts you've had, and if they've been impactful in the past, they're likely to be impactful in the future. Another important factor to consider when you're looking at the potential impact of your test is the number of visitors who will see the test. If you're testing on your homepage where you get a lot of traffic, your potential impact is much higher than if you're testing on some obscure page somewhere on your site that doesn't get a lot of visitors. Even if that test page that doesn't get a lot of traffic converts phenomenally well, because the low traffic, the, the trade-off isn't as good. So that's the second factor you should look at when you're evaluating the impact of the test is how many visitors will actually see this test. Another thing that I like to look at when I'm evaluating the potential impact of a test is I like to evaluate that based on my testing methodology. We have a methodology that we use to evaluate the su likely success of the test based on previous tests we've run. And I'll have another video on that so you can see that from there. But again, your testing methodology should you give you an indicator of what type of test is this. And if it's a valuable type of test, then it's more likely to give you more impact. The second thing you should look at when you're prioritizing your test ideas is the estimated effort of the test. This is where you need to go to the rest of your team and get an estimate from them on the level of effort that will be involved on their part. So you need to meet with your designers to know the level of effort it will take for them to design the experience. You will need to meet with your front end developers to know the level of effort for them to be able to code the test and to be able to get the test live. So that's the second thing to evaluate, the estimated level of effort for each test idea. The third thing that you should look at when you're prioritizing your test ideas is the importance of the idea itself. And what I mean by this is there may be some tests that have dependencies. For example, you may have a really valuable test you want to run, but you can't run that test until you learn about something else. Or maybe it's part of a process or a flow. And those test ideas that have certain dependencies become more important because they have to run first. Another part of evaluating the importance of your test idea is the organizational needs and timing needs. So for example, we have a Mother's Day campaign coming up and we want to test creative and test different content that we're going to be putting out for Mother's Day. So that test becomes more important because the organizational and timing needs and constraints that we have to work within. So that's the third factor, importance, and that will be dependencies and priority and timeline that you have to work with. The fourth factor that you should consider when you're evaluating test ideas and prioritizing them is what I call the love factor. There will be certain ideas that people just like. They love it, they're enamored with it, they want to launch this idea because they think it's going to win. You know, whether it's your gut or you just feel good about the test idea, the love factor is important. And so as the organization, you want to give that a place in the equation to evaluate test ideas and prioritize them. But you want to be careful with this one. The problem I see with most companies is that the love factor becomes more important than all the other factors. And if we're disciplined in this approach, the love factor should be the least important factor. The love factor is there as like, hey, yeah, we kind of like this, but it should never take priority or precedence over the effort, over the expected impact, or even the importance so, so consider the love factor, make sure everyone gets their vote on that, but make sure it's less important than the other factors. So at this point, you would want to create a score for these four factors. And by creating a score, you can then create a weighting the, to be able to compare different tests against each other. So however you average out your score will be dependent on your organization. For me, my expected impact and my cost are the most important factors. And, and more often than not, I'm looking at those two factors. And so I want to weight those more heavily with my scoring so that I can prioritize those, those ideas that will give you the most impact for the least amount of cost. 
But again, those other factors, the importance factor and the love factor should weigh in as well. So again, the step now is to create an average score for each idea based on these four factors. And if you also have other factors that you need to add in that are important to your business for um, because you have constraints or because you have other things that need to be considered, then that's where you would add them as well and then create an average score for each test idea. Once you have an average score, it's easy to compare across the test ideas so you now can prioritize them and make sure that you're running the most impactful tests first. Thanks for joining me today. I hope this quick video on prioritizing test ideas was helpful. Remember to make sure you give high priority to those tests that will make the most impact on your business. And the only way you can do that is by evaluating these factors and making sure that you're not forgetting things and being driven by love more than you are by data. If you like what you've heard today, please subscribe and hit the like button. I post new videos every Thursday and I'm sure you'll want to see the next ones.